Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I've got a photo that I took many, many years ago. And I, I'll admit every couple of years I come across this photo in my library and I re-edit it. And this one to me is the best one yet. I always think that though when I re-edit a photo. So, you know, whatever. But the point is I'm re-editing a photo that I took years ago. Let me show you the photo. This is it right here. This is from the Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania basically an old prison that's now a museum. And there's this cell, and by the way, they're all blocked off, so everybody's shot of this cell, and there's tons of them online. It's kind of the same. You can't like move around and get closer because you're basically behind, uh, you're, in the, you're in the outside of the bars, not on the inside, um, which is a good place to be. Um, however, um, I, I took this photo and I just started playing around with it. And I was like, you know, I just, I just wanna do something fun and creative. I kinda wanna reinvent the photo, kinda wanna overhaul the photo, pick whatever word, you know, you want to use, but um, I got into Luminar AI and I started playing. So the first thing I did was hit it with Accent AI um, in the Enhance AI filter, went to 100 and, you know, boom, like um, really bright and vibrant, which is cool. I like that, but, you know, um, it gives me a better view into the photo. I mean, it's not too dark to see there, but it gives me a good starting place. And sometimes I'll just do that if it's a little bit dark, I just bump Accent AI up as much as I can stand. And here I can stand it at 100. However, the final result's gonna be way different. Um, as you can imagine, this is fairly dramatic and moody in terms of a scene. So I'm definitely gonna go about enhancing that kind of uh, look. Um, so the next thing I did is I dropped the exposure just slightly like a 0.2 or so. Um, and I added some smart contrast of about a 30 five so something about like that and then i took the highlights down to 100 because at this point i was like i want to calm down some of that brightness in the uh you know and coming out of the ceiling if you will so there was basically an open uh slat or whatever at the roof uh, so light could come in so there it is again before and there it is after a little accent ai and a little light now the next thing i wanted to do because it's kind of a crunchy scene is add structure and so i just bumped that up to about 30 applied it globally because I'm like, let's just hit the whole thing with some structure. And by the way, if you can't tell, I've um, basically just turned off the filters. And so in this video, I'm just turning them back on and instead of like, uh, you know, dragging all the sliders while I'm here. The next thing, and you can see which uh, tools I've used because of what's highlighted here. You know, if they got a little dot next to them, you know, I've used them. But next I went into details and I basically just did a little bit of bump there as well in the medium and in the large details. Again, I mean, it's a crumbling wall jail cell with like a barber chair in it that's all ratty and beat up, except for that bright pop of red. I'm like, I'm definitely going to accentuate details here. So I did. So I uh, brought up the details and the structure, got a little bit more crunch going. And then I went down to toning. And here it was basically, I'm just trying to adjust the colors and the mood a little bit. So as I turn that on, you can see it's not a massive change, you know, but it does do a little bit. So in the highlights, which you can see I'm in, um, I'm in the warmer tones and I went not high but like 55 and in the shadows I went into kind of the greenish a little bit because there's that green kind of moldy mossy crud on the walls I wanted to bring that up a little bit so I used toning to do that in the shadows um, and then in the highlights I just went a little bit warmer and so that was basically bumping up some of the warm tones that already exist just giving them a little bit more kick so at this point, I was a little undecided about what I wanted to do. So I said, you know what I'll do? I'll go to Mystical because it's mystical. It's fun. It adds some contrast. It adds some shadow. And I knew I wanted to bring up some shadow. Even though I used Accent AI at 100, I, I often will go back and do edits later that will counteract things I did before. And I don't care. Like, all I care about is the final resu uh, result. Uh, you know, it's often a very winding path that I end up taking. Even if I back up and redo some things, it's kind of how it goes for me. So I went to Mystical next, which adds some nice mood to it. But the thing that I didn't want to do is apply that across the entire photo. And so what I did is I went into the masks. And if I show you the mask, I used a radial mask here to isolate this and only put the Mystical in those areas um, outside of the right around the chair. In other words, I didn't want the shadow and the contrast that comes out of Mystical to apply to the chair. And you'll know why in a little bit, but the short version of why is because I didn't really want to lose the brightness and the focus on the chair. But I love what Mystical does to the rest of the photo. So it adds some nice mood and some shadow and some contrast everywhere except in that radial, basically uh, that radial area around the chair that you can see there. And then because I was feeling kind of smart or something at the time, I, I copied that mask thinking I'd reuse it. And so I did. I went down to super contrast 
And then what I did here is apply super contrast to the midtones. And once again, I copied and pasted that mask. And so the same exact mask as I used on Mystical, I used here on Super Contrast. And so what I did is, um, let me close the masking menu, I adjusted just the midtones, but again, it's only applying in those areas uh, that are covered by the mask. In other words, it's not going into the chair. So again, I isolated the chair. I wanted to keep that kind of preserved because when you're adding contrast, you're either darkening or lightening. And I didn't really want to mess with the tones in the chair. I definitely did not want to darken it because overall i want to make sure that the viewer in the end result which you'll see here in a few minutes in the end result i wanted to make sure that that the chair is visible it's clearly the subject of the photo but i really wanted to for lack of a better word shine the light on the photo hint hint um and so um using that radial mask on both mystical and super contrast helped me isolate the chair keep it unaffected by those two filters then it was down to Color Harmony, one of my favorite tools using the Color Balance tool. And there you can see it's quite a bit different in terms of tones and that Color Balance, um, honestly, it can just change your photo so much. And I, I love it because I love color. Uh, but what I did, as you can see here in the shadows, I went a little bit more to the cyan and a little bit more to the blue. So left on the cyan red, which is toward cyan, which is kind of that uh, what do you call it, cerulean blue or whatever, kind of that, well, cyan, I guess, technically. Um, but then on the yellow blue, of course, I went away from the yellow toward the blue. So that was what I wanted to do there. And I think, yeah, I also did something on the midtones, which was basically a similar move. I took the midtones and went toward the cyan away from red and toward the blue away from yellow. So that gave me a nice, um, kind of a moody look to the photo. So there it is before. You can see it's a bit warmer overall because those rusty oranges are coming through a little bit brighter and now they're a little bit more muted there's more blue in the scene and i like that because it's helping to create the mood that i'm looking for which is like uh you know like a desolate you're maybe this is your last uh, shave so now that i've done all that this is where i said hint hint a minute ago about wanting to really shine a light on that and there's no better way to do that i think than sun rays and so i went ahead and clicked that on and i made various adjustments to the sun rays tool here but you can see what I ended up on. I mean, I adjusted some things here. I don't know if I did anything. Yeah, I did a little bit there uh, in the ray settings and uh, the warmth I didn't touch, but you can basically see what I did there. And really what it's done is if you go back, there it is before, a little bit bluer and you don't have that light streaming in. And then with the sun rays filter, you get that light streaming in and it creates a little bit more contrast, a little bit more shadow, even though it's a sun rays filter, if you look at it, before and then once you add it it's creating a little bit more contrast there which i like and i think that really plays into the kind of the mood i was going uh going for here which is clearly a very dramatic and moody kind of like like i said like i'm going in for my last shaves it makes me uh, think of like a, something from the green mile or some kind of a stephen king book or something right so it gets me kind of interested and excited about creating that mood and that kind of scary, kind of mysterious look overall in the photo. Next thing I did, because again, I'm trying to isolate that chair, which, you know, again, you're going to focus on it anyway as a viewer, but I wanted to go ahead and add a vignette because the vignette, as you probably know, has inner light and the inner light will let me do that to the photo, which is really complementing, I think, what the sun rays have done. Shining some light in, it's kind of hitting a little bit of the walls, it's hitting some of the chair, but then also I'm using that inner light part here of the vignette to really brighten that up and darken those outer areas because, you know, I don't want you to spend any time or not very much time on the outer areas. I mean, you're going to look at them because they're crunchy and they're crumbling and it's just really interesting looking, but I think you're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. And with the vignette, being able to use that inner light really, I think, brings attention to that, um, well, to the chair, right? Which again, it's going to get your attention anyway, but it really helps me really focus the light. And I like that quite a bit. So there it is before just with the sun rays. And then when you add vignette, really concentrates that and basically helps me get that beam of light from the sun rays filter, really just hitting the chair nicely because of inner light. And at this point I thought I was done, but there's a couple of things that were bugging me. So the first thing I did is I went into color and what I did is I went into the saturation of the blue and I reduced it by 70. And that's because those walls on the left and the right hand side, as you can see, they were really just blue. Um, and a lot of that is because of what I did with color balance. Reducing the saturation of the blue really helped me a lot here because what I don't want, let me turn that back on. Um, I don't want that blue, it's lighter and brighter and really blue. And to me, it kind of distracts from the overall photo. 
I've darkened it so because it's darker and less colorful, your eyes are gonna be less drawn to it. This is kind of how it works, at least for me, it seems logical. If it's bright and colorful, you're gonna look at it. If it's dark and faded or muted, you're less likely to look at it. And while I want you to look at the textures and check it out, I don't want you to spend too much time on it overall. So uh, reducing that helped me out quite a bit. While I was here, the other thing I did, of course, was reduce the luminance of the blue. So I darkened it and reduced saturation. So once again, brighter and bluer, and now darker and less saturated. So again, gave me some nice control over that color. And speaking of color, that red is really popping, which I love. Now, and the green's kind of popping. I like that quite a bit too. You could, of course, go in and make either some local adjustments to adjust those if you wanted to, or if you're gonna do it globally with a particular color, you could do that here in HSL. But I'm gonna leave the green. I like it. I like that it looks like mold is growing on the walls, like you know, nature's reclaiming the place or something. Um, and I love the pop of red. But what I don't like is on the seat here in this chair, you're basically getting um, really pinky, kind of magenta, purple kind of look. Um, and I don't want that. So I went in with a local adjustment. And what I did is I just masked that in with a brush and I took the saturation down by 100. And as you can see, it turned the chair black. So once again, if I turn this on before, there's the chair seat cushion, if you will, with really the pink and kind of purple, really bright, really saturated. And I got to be honest, like I was so excited about my edit the first um, couple of times I went through and reviewed it, I wasn't even looking at the seat. But then upon closer inspection, I was like, "Ooh, hold on, that doesn't look so good, which is why I went and got a local mask, which come in super handy in Luminar AI. So if I show you the brush, you can just see, I just brushed it in real quickly with a little, uh, the paintbrush and basically took the saturation down, uh, negative 100, it's completely gone. So desaturated seat, bright pop of red, some green on the walls, some, uh, not some, a lot of light adjustments, you know, super contrast, accent AI helps, even the color balance helps, uh, not to mention the color uh, luminance work that I did in the HSL tool, vignette helps, lots of different things adjusting the light, some structure AI and details to kind of pop the details, local mass to control the color there, and of course sun rays to create that pop of light down in there. And that's really my whole edit, my friend. So if you remember what we started with, there's the photo, kind of bland, boring light, nothing that particularly exciting, except a really interesting and cool looking scene in my opinion, but I kind of like grungy old stuff. It's just fun to edit, to be honest. So that's what it was before, kind of an uninspired kind of look. And then afterwards, really moody, just very different. I feel like I've overhauled the photo and done quite a few things to it. Again, if it's too bright red for you, I totally get it. I could easily fix that with HSL, uh, but I kind of like how it's popping. Um, and the same with the green on the walls, it's really popping, but again, I kind of like that. But that's the look I'm going for. Really moody, kind of Stephen King-ish, in my opinion, but something that was quite fun to edit and really just able to take advantage of all the different powerful tools that Luminar AI has to help me kind of go from a photo that was, you know, an interesting subject, a cool thing, if you will, into something that I feel like kind of tells a story now. And that's what I was going for, moody, dramatic, kind of telling a story and making you as a viewer feel like, oh wow, I could see myself or somebody sitting in that chair and, uh, you know, be in the end of the road, so to speak. So that's it, one more time, before and after. That's my edit. It was a lot of fun. That's the power and the flexibility and frankly, the fun that you can have with Luminar AI. Hope it helps, hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. Thanks for stopping by, hanging out, being yourself and interacting with me. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.